In the last video, I said that if you're taking a UV vis spectrum, oh no, okay, if you're taking a UV vis spectrum of something, here's my UV vis. Wait, we're plotting your wavelength of your peak, and then you have absorption or absorbance rather. And what we we're saying was that. Let me try to get my marker working again. Okay. So this position is going to be your energy. So lambda is your kind of related to related to energy, or I guess it's one over energy, in fact. So this is what delta O is. So this is the energy. And then so the absorbance, like I said, was the intensity of how much gets absorbed, or if, you know, like um, so it's kind of more like a quantum effect. It's from the the wave function and then the it's called the so-called allowedness of the peak. But let's kind of talk about that a little bit. So what governs peak intensities? Intensity of absorption, um, I'm going to call it kind of the allowedness of the transition. So. One thing that we should keep in mind is uh, there's certain called selection rules. So this gives us selection rules. And we'll talk more about that if you take advanced later organic chemistry. But for now, one thing that we need to keep in mind is spin is conserved. Spin is conserved. By which I mean that suppose we have Let's say our D1, this is our ground state. Ground state. If we excite it with a photon, our electron goes up. So this is our excited state. Oop. And so when I mean say spin is conserved, we have to have one electron pointing up here, S equals 1 half, and one electron pointing up in the final excited state. So same thing happens if we have like a all electrons are paired, s equals zero in the ground state. It must be s equals zero in the excited state too. So another example. Suppose we have this is our ground state. These are all paired, s equals zero. If we excite one of our electrons up, so here. We have one unpaired electron pointing up, but we have one unpaired electron pointing down. So this is still s equals zero in our in our excited state. So spin is still conserved, but one upshot is is that if you have let's say let's say manganese two plus high spin d five s equals five halves. There is no way to excite an electron from this d orbital in the T2g up to here. So suppose that we did that, right? If we took this electron, moved it up here, we would have to end up doing what's called a spin flip, right? So this electron can't be in this same orbital and be spin up. So we have to do a spin flip. And then our final s, this will be s equals 3 halves. So because of this, if spin is not conserved, then this intensity of the transition is going to be lower. So as a result, manganese 2 plus ions, or high spin manganese 2 plus, or D5, are often, you know, they're kind of pale pink or colorless. So yes, allowedness is what governs your transition. Um, okay. Let me quickly erase, and I have more to say about this. Okay. So one way to distinguish different types of transitions is through this intensity, because we know something about how allowed different types of transitions are. And this is important because in your molecule, you have Many electrons in different places, many orbitals. So some could be ligand centers, some could be on the metal, or like some could be d orbitals, some could be something else. So if we can't, as a result, UV vis um, can often be complicated. There's multiple electrons are moving everywhere. So 
we can use something about the intensity of the transitions to know more about the complex. So in your metal complex, you have sets of orbitals. So I'm just going to draw one line for each. So here's our EG, here are T2G. Right, these can be filled or these can be empty. Below that, we have kind of our filled ligand-centered orbitals. So this could be like lone pairs, or they could be sigma. They could even be pi. These are kind of like our ligand. And then above that, we could have empty ligand orbitals like pi star. So let's say pi star, empty ligand. So this is kind of the, the anatomy of your complex, right? You have filled ligand orbitals, maybe filled, maybe empty d orbitals, empty ligand orbitals. So as a result, we have different types of transitions. So our first one, it could be exciting from, let's say, T2G to EG, which we talked about last video. So this would be type 1. So these are DD transitions. And so these, these can, so if they're spin allowed, like we talked about just now, then they're more intense. If they're spin forbidden, then they're going to be not very intense. Um, the typical intensity of these are about maybe like 10 wave number, could be 100. So they're actually not that intense, but we do see them, and then so that's why uh, D transitional complexes are often colored. Okay. But on the other hand, we could talk about going from, let's say, from these filled ligand orbitals, we can go to empty D orbitals, whether they're in T2G or EG, so this will be type 2. So these are called ligand to metal charge transfer. Charge transfer. LMCT. And so what's notable about this charge transfer, so we say it's charge transfer because we have a ligand-centered electron, and then we're moving it onto a d orbital, so it's metal-centered. That's why it's somewhat charge transfer, even though they're all within the same complex. So charge transfer transitions are often very intense. So uh, this has to do with the symmetry of the d orbitals. So we're not going to get into that in this class. But just for, for your purposes, you know that charge transfer transitions, going from ligand-centered orbitals to metal-centered orbitals, are very intense compared to dd transitions. OK. Um, the third type would be, let's say if we have electrons from d orbitals, are we going to empty ligand orbitals? This is type 3. So 3, this would be MLCT metal to ligand charge transfer. And these are also, these could also be very intense. So these are similar intensity. OK. And then the last type could be if we just go from a ligand centered orbital to a ligand empty orbital. Type 4. So ligand to ligand. These can also be pretty intense. Um, often we don't see these because they're, they're very high energy for reasons we talked about, so they don't absorb in the visible. But it is possible if you have a special ligand to see these type of transitions as well. So these are the four major kinds for a metal complex. And that's why it's important to be able to distinguish these if you have, like, so you have the hallmark signatures of charge transfer versus DD. So it's one way to distinguish what's going on in your complex.